In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to become a Microsoft MVP. I'm going to share my journey. I'm going to share the program advantages and then you're going to provide some tips and advice as to how I can help you to become a Microsoft MVP. So if you are serious about your career, if you have a passion for IT or anything related to Microsoft, then keep watching because I'll show you how to unlock one of the greatest benefits that you can get from an industry from a learning perspective, but also from a career perspective because the only input that you need is time. So if you're interested, keep watching. And then let me share with you what being a Microsoft MVP is really like. First, I'm going to share my personal journey, how I became a Microsoft MVP. For me, the journey started around 15 years ago now where I became involved with the Citrix community. I had aspirations to become a, what they call a Citrix CTP. And eventually I applied for a program and I became a Citrix CTA. How did I do it personally? For me, the journey was through writing blogs and also presenting at events. Okay, so it all started from writing blogs. So that's something which anybody can do, right? So all it takes is, I don't know, one to two hours a week just to sit there and write down something that you've learned through the week. Or if there's a new feature which has been brought out, just research that feature, right? It'll take you probably 50, 30 minutes just look and get like release notes and maybe have a play around with the product. But I'd say the, the total time to take a decent blog article can be anywhere from two to 10 hours, depending on how much time and effort and research that you need to put into it. But it's something that anyone can do. It doesn't cost anything. You can get a free blog site quite easily. And that's a good start to put your content out there. You can even just create articles on LinkedIn, right? That still counts. So you can create lengthy articles on LinkedIn and just use that. I'd say that's the, entry wise, that's probably the most popular route that people go through just to start on the program. So yeah, that's my first tip. Stop writing, just do it. Don't overthink it, just do it, okay? That's how I started personally. So. The other avenue which I went through became more advanced is I started speaking. So no one knows the secret of success to get into the Microsoft MVP program. It's a bit of a mix of a couple of different things from past experience and looking what other people have done. Me personally, I started to speak at the Citrix user group events. And then eventually when I started focusing more on the kind of Azure Virtual Desktop, I started speaking around Azure Virtual Desktop events as well. So probably not many, probably two, three, maybe four events a year. Anyone can do that. All it takes is time, especially if it's virtual event. You can just search on Google. You can have a look on certain events website and stuff. Eventbrite is a good one. Well, just ask people. If you see an event that looks like it may be a good fit for you, then just apply. The next one I say is probably niche down. If you interested in something then you basically need to check the device award category that you get from Microsoft MVP because there's lots of different categories so we can have stuff like Windows and devices and Azure Virtual Desktop right so if you want to be an Azure Virtual Desktop MVP then guess what create content around Azure Virtual Desktop a common mistake that I see amongst people is they'll do a mix of everything they'll do a bit of MC5 they'll do a bit of Intune they'll do a bit of this do a bit of that and it doesn't show any focus so Pick your category that you want to be awarded in, whether that's Azure, whether that's infrastructure as a code, whether that's M365, whether that's Intune, whether that's Copilot. There's lots of different categories that you can get and pick what you want and then just be laser focused on doing that. The next one, which is a very good avenue to get into becoming the MVP program is basically around <coughs> use groups. So we spoke about attending user groups. What about creating user groups? For me, this was probably the one thing which got me into the MVP program. So I created the UK AVD user group. And from that, I had thousands of people attend online virtually. We now run the EC forum, which is like a physical version of that instead. I've been running that alongside a couple of theory committee members for the past two years now. And that's a physical in-person event that we hold four times a year. But to start off with, I set up the UK AVD user group and we met online monthly. So all I did was I went into Eventbrite, set it up in Eventbrite and set it to say monthly, post that on LinkedIn, boom, done. That was it. Time-wise, not very much time at all, to be honest with you. We spent probably, I don't know, we held one event a month, which is like three, four hours in time. 
I had to research, get people to come and speak and stuff, which is probably one or two hours a week doing that. And then the actual event itself, probably around six hours a month. So time input wise for me, it was actually very small. I'd say about 10 hours a month maybe. And I think that was the one thing which got me the Microsoft MVP because I basically got a lot of output from that, a lot of reach. And from that, I started putting videos on YouTube of the event. So I had a YouTube channel for a while, but then I thought, hey, let's put these videos out there. And then from there, I then started creating other content on YouTube as well, which is now I've turned that into weekly videos where I share content around Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, Intune, Nerdio, that type of thing. And that's been my personal journey, right? That's how I've done it. The only thing you need to do is get started because you never know what that's going to lead on to. So just to summarize, for me, it was number one, wrote a blog, okay? Number two, spoke at user groups. Number three, created a user group. Number four, started uploading those user group videos onto YouTube. Number five, started creating user user content, done. And I've also wrote a book as well. So that, that's my number one piece of advice. Just get started, right? Now, the one thing I am gonna say is from a time commitment perspective, it's massive, right? So getting to an MVP is one thing, staying an MVP is another thing, right? Because you need to be committed, you have to be committed. I estimate for me personally, the MVP program, I'd say 10 hours a week, easy, minimum, more like 20 hours. So for me, it's keeping up to date, attending product group meetings. It's a lot of time creating content. So you have to be passionate about it, which I am. I'm very passionate about, I love my job. I love interacting with customers. I just love working in this industry. And the MVP program has brought just so many rewards, right? It's got me much closer to the product group so we can feed back to product group what we like, what we don't like. But it's all about the people. Right. The amount of people who have met through the MVP program and the community is just outstanding. So it's really like a small family of people. What you'll find is every little area has its own little niche. Okay. And with those people, we interact on a regular basis, whether that's by WhatsApp groups, whether that's by email, or whether that's in person events that we meet up on a regular basis. For your career, it's an outstanding benefit, right? Because it puts you in that top 1%. So with any industry, always try to be better than everyone else, right? That's how to get ahead. If you want better salary, if you want better job prospects, be in that top 1%. Do stuff which nobody else is doing. With the Microsoft DVP program, I think there's only two or 3,000 people in the whole world who are part of that program. And the only thing which is stopping you from being a part of that program is time and commitment. So imagine, from an employer perspective, if they see someone who's in the Microsoft MVP program, they automatically think that person's an expert. That may not be the case, but from certain employees, they will only employ Microsoft MVPs. They're out there, right? But it just puts you above everyone else. But from a learning perspective, it's amazing because we get access to all the features in private preview and we get to feedback and interact with the product team. So you're constantly learning. But as I said, that's also a huge time commitment. So I'd say if you don't have any spare time, if you're just a normal nine to five work person, it's not for you. But if you love your job, if you're committed and you can have that extra time that weekends to spend with your to do stuff, it's an amazing program to be in and I'd recommend it to anyone. Okay. So what happens when you get approved to be the MVP program? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some stuff that I've got with you. First of all, you get this lovely reward from Microsoft. This is basically an award which is posted out to you. And then you see every year that you get the program, you add an extra ring to it. So the goal is to get here, right? I've been five years in the program. You get that award, you get other benefits because I'm in Azure Virtual Desktop category, I get Azure credits to complain around the product. You get M365 licenses, 
and Visual Studio subscription as well. So you can download software with product keys, that type of stuff. So that's what I mean. You can download software, play about with it without having to worry about trial licenses and stuff. It really helps to work with Microsoft every day around that thing. But the biggest benefit is I've just come back from the Microsoft MVP Summit, which is the Microsoft HQ in Seattle. So we got to spend a week with the Microsoft product teams, right? And other MVPs as well. That was amazing. To go to actual Microsoft HQ, interact with other MVPs and speak one-on-one -on -one with the product team. They're telling us what they're gonna be working on over the next 12 months and we feed back and say what we like, what we don't like, and they actually listen to that. And that for me is probably the biggest benefit of being in the Microsoft MVP program, just that interaction that you get with the product team is just invaluable because if I've got a problem with the product, I can just ping them right on Teams and say, hey, can we have a chat about this? Or if we've got something which you think would be better, you get the interaction as well. But there's also all the career benefits, community, meeting people. It's just an amazing program to be in so that's all i wanted to really say today i may do another video next week i shot quite a lot of my phone video content for my experience at the mvb summit around sort of video walking around buildings in seattle and videos inside campus that type of stuff so if you want to see stuff like that please drop a comment in the below and i'll probably share that throughout the week as a one-off video or something but yeah just something a little bit different this week just describing my career how I became a Microsoft MVP and the benefits that you can get from being a Microsoft MVP as well. I guess the last thing to say, if you do want to become an MVP, you have to be nominated by someone. I regularly get contacted by people out of the blue saying, hey, can you nominate me to Microsoft MVP? And it'll be like, okay, can you show me what you've done? And they haven't done anything. If you want to become a Microsoft MVP and have created a lot of content, whether that's by a blog, videos, user groups, books, whatever, please just contact me and I'm more than happy to nominate you. The good thing about the MVP program is there's a lot of community spirit, right? We all want to help each other. So yeah, that's it for this week. Just dumping my thoughts on the MVP program after spending a week with a load of other Microsoft MVPs. So yeah, if you got any questions, please drop a comment in below. I'll see you hopefully maybe midweek for a Microsoft MVP Summit special video. If not, I'll speak to you next week. All right, thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Thank you.